So here's a GH5 with the, an amorphic lens set up right here at Tilton. Who are you? Hi, I'm Joe. Uh, I work over at uh, Tilta. I'm the creative director um, from the US. And can you uh, show us around, like carry it around and show what, what, what is this product here that you have? Yeah, so what I have here is the G1 uh, with two optional accessories, these wooden handles. Uh, we have a cable to run GH5 and A7S and run stop the candle uh, hand from the handle. Um, and uh, what is this controller there? So we have three different modes on the G1. If you tap the front button once, it goes green. This is our pan follow mode, so if you pan, it'll pan with you. If you tilt, it'll tilt with you. We have an app as well to make that go faster or slower depending on what you want. And then if you tap the front button twice, it goes into red. This locks the tilt. And so now you can do flashlight mode. You can go all the way down to the ground, all the way up into the sky, and do boom type, jib type shots. Um, if you tap the front button three times, it goes blue, and this is our chicken head mode, which is fully stabilized. Uh, you can turn around, it would stay, stay looking forward. And then from the thumb toggle here, you can tilt and pan. And it's the same uh, you have right there with the Sony, which is uh, A7S? Yeah, so this one's rigged up with our Sony A7S and our new prototype uh, follow focus system for gimbals. Uh, as you so can this see... Is your product right here yeah. also? Yeah, so as you can see here, it's just attached by a hot shoe. Uh, the motor is right here, runs off a USB and then one 18650 battery here in the MDR. And then it's completely wireless to this hand unit. Nice. And you can full focus. Can you like can you carry it up and show a bit how you would do that? Yeah. So you can pick it up. You can select your mode, uh, and then you can full focus. Whoa! So that's a steady manual focus uh, solution right here. Uh, uh, wireless. Completely wireless. wireless. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, what's special about this product? Well, how how is this special in the industry? Well, on top of that, you can hand this normally when you're doing gimbal work, you want to have someone off to the side uh, as a first AC pulling focus. And so you can do the same thing with this, you can give this off to your first AC, and then you can focus on just operating. Is there any way to get the HDMI cables out and still be steady? Um, if you want to use external kind of displays and stuff, what yeah, would you do? Yeah, we, we have different accessories for these rosettes, because there's two standard rosettes, and we have this DC in and out here. So you can use the gimbal itself to power things like limo boxes or PTAP boxes. As you can see here, we have an example where this cable is powering the camera from the gimbal itself. So you don't have to do it this way, we just wanted to show Does that, that that's Does that make the possible. camera lighter? Can you take the battery out? And uh, I can't exactly take it out without removing it. Okay. Um, but I mean, this, this could be a, a dummy battery. It is a dummy battery. Ah, it is a dummy yeah. battery. And then so there's a dummy the battery getting power from the gimbal. Where? Where's the battery? The batteries are in here. There's four like 18650 batteries right here. Could you even add more big batteries down here if you want? And have... uh, no, there isn't oh. room for additional power. Uh, we do have these handles over here that also contain the four batteries, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get two of them for both sides, and that can be doubling the What's power. What's this product here? This is the exact same gimbal. Connected yeah, it's just showing that uh, this follow focus can be powered using this handle. And this handle is even more prototype than everything else. Uh, by the end of the month, we should have the toggle that's here on this handle as well. So you can control the gimbals, pan, tilt, roll, and uh, follow focus. Can you explain what this anamorphic setup is? How do you build this? <laughs> uh, well, the anamorphic lens here that's uh, not tilted. That's just something that I like to do as a hobby. So you bought um, the different parts and put them together? Yeah, so and the it's idea... Right? <laughs> it's way more affordable than trying to buy an anamorphic yourself. You from, it's not like Anjinyu? Uh, yeah, from Panavision or trying to get a set of Kawas by yourself. Uh, so like 300 and something? Yeah, so I mean, it's... The Metabones adapter here is just so that I can mount it to the camera. That's the most expensive part, no? Uh, no, no, it wouldn't be that, no. The anamorphic piece here is a pretty expensive piece for the anamorphic element. Uh, that's the Cowbell and Howl two, times two, uh, which everyone claims to be 
at least one of the best ones from the from the start. Who's and then, Kawa? Uh, Kawa is it like from where? Uh, Japan. They're Japanese. just a yeah Japanese so lens making company. Old one. Oh, it is a very old one. Is it yeah. from the seventies or something? More than likely, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a very old projection. Is, is this something that would be used for projectors? I believe cameras. so, yeah. I believe it was used for projectors at one point. Um, and then and you have, then you have uh, a, I have a vintage lens here, which is the Primo Plan 5. Uh, it's a 58F uh, 1.9. And so then the anamorphic effect is awesome, but the problem is how do you focus? Right. Well, so in this Can you situation... Make those, those things <laughs> for that? We might be able to. Uh, since that's still prototype, I don't see why we couldn't try to play around with this idea. As of right now, two, right? yeah, right now you have to just double focus. Uh, so what I usually do is I just set it to the minimum focus on both lenses, and then if you're tracking a subject, keep that subject at that exact distance, and then you can walk around, do profile, do uh, tracking shots, orbiting around them. Because if it's dual, you have to focus twice. Right. How would you, in one little thing here, make it work for two? Is that possible to imagine a scenario uh, well, where you would just yet. have only yeah. one that kind of like syncs both of the there pulling? Are, there are other uh, <laughs> adapters out there that uh, allow you to set both lenses to infinity and then you can use that as your focus. It's a diopter yeah. that goes in front and then you can just pull focus on that and it's a single focus. So how much is this set up? How much does it cost? So the G1 by itself without any accessories, the starter kit is $9.99 US. Uh, it comes with a hard shell safety case and custom foam mount. How do you compare with uh, what DJI or some other companies have? Uh, well, is from this, the most part... Are people very excited about this? Yeah, we, we have a payload that's usually way higher than anybody else. Actually, right now, I think we're the highest payload uh, that you can get at right this moment. At this size? Yeah, we, we can take it about three kilogram payload, uh, eight pounds-ish. We've done a 5D Mark II with a 2470, had no problems. Uh, we've also done um, a 1DX with a, a small lens, I think a 14 to 24 Samyang, uh, no problems. The bigger and taller you go and the longer you go with the camera and the lens, uh, it really isn't dependent on the weight, it's dependent on like the length. So the longer the camera, the heavier the glass, the more you have to push everything back, and then uh, that kind of gets too close to this motor. So... Uh, That's the limit in how big you can do? Yeah, I think right here is a, is a good example of the length that you can achieve. Um, our motors are very strong, so you can force them to overcompensate. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but for the most part, this length is, uh, is kind of maxing it out. Um, so it's not so much weight, it's, it's mainly trying to find the balance of your lens and your camera. Where are the motors in a system like this? Just... So there's three motors. There's one for the pan down here. There's one for the roll, which is up here. And then the tilt, which is up here. So that's three axis stabilization. Yep. And uh, how's the battery like? Because I've seen some of those systems that kind of like run out of battery pretty quickly. Yeah, so if you're not powering anything else, uh, there's four 18650 batteries in the handle, and that lasts about 10 hours. 10 hours? Yeah. That's plenty, right? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. much more than the Sony camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can change the battery on this Actually, one yeah. Times. When we were shooting our stuff, uh, the Sony camera on the gimbal, we switched the batteries out three times, and Before then the gimbal, didn't... We, didn't, we didn't change at all. Uh, Actually, I think that's why, for this show, we've decided to plug it into. Let's check some of the other stuff that uh, Tilka is doing. This. So you don't only have small systems, you have pretty... What is this? So what you see there is uh, the Armor Man and our new Gravity. Let's go, okay. let's go, let's find him. He's running too fast. So. So Tilta is, uh, is it an old company? How, how long time have you been doing this kind of products? Um, Let's go around. Yeah, the screw wasn't right. connecting to the, uh, the mount again. Can you explain what's going on with this one? How many, how many motors in this one? Uh, same. Uh, three axis motors, uh, one for tilt, one for the pan, and then uh, one for the roll. He's just using um, the Armor Man, which is our stabilization system, to be able to lift something that heavy. Because obviously when you're trying to use heavy rigs and heavy lenses, like big anamorphics or big zooms, everything gets incredibly heavy. You have to also put a big battery on it. 
uh, and power it for a long time, and then trying to carry that thing with their hands. Not is that the exactly same the one that's thing. over here or not? It's not the same, right? That is the exact same gimbal. Yeah. So it's the gimbal that's the same. That's just a bigger rig and a ring to hold it. And then uh, you have mounting options for our new. Let me try to catch him. So. It's, it's cool to have uh, to have these arms there. Is that an innovation, or is it's been seen before? Yeah, I mean, uh, like dual arms on both sides like that. There are definitely a bunch of rigs out there. Um, I'd say that ours is probably the most compact one and maybe the coolest looking one. You have the coolest looking one. Yeah. How much it cost that one? The, the whole thing. Let's see, the gimbal, uh, that is version 2, so I don't have a price yet on that because uh, it's still prototype. The Armor Man, though, is... I'd have to... let me see this. Okay, I'm just checking over here while you check. Let me go by you here. It's an arm solution. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. What you have to do? Do we have the uh, power? So how, how much was the? Uh, uh, two thousand two hundred fifty for the armor van. So all this stuff sounds like it's not US. too expensive. No, <laughs> right? You that's have, uh, yeah, that's one of the best, the best parts. Value? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he says it better than I do. But uh, well, what's the strategy? How do, how do you make uh, all these uh, engineering? Uh, how do you do all this stuff? How do they do all this stuff? Production. Just think. We do direct song. <laughs> <laughs> just, just think about just it. Just think. <laughs> yeah. And is where's the headquarters? Uh, Shenzhen, China. Shenzhen. Yeah. So do you, do you also keep up with the quality? You want to have the materials, right? How's the strategy to get good quality? Because, uh, well, I mean, everything uh, that you see back there is designed by a small group of people that uh, really care about stuff and want to make sure that it's the highest quality. So, and uh, so, how how popular is this? Are there many many customers around the world? Yeah, uh, we have so many uh, distributors all across the world. Uh, we're here at IBC right now, and. Um, uh, we have a, a headquarters out in the United States, California and Burbank, and um, that's near the Hollywood stuff, right? Yeah, uh, we we tend to do a lot of work with uh, big crews and uh, other big companies that uh, do pretty big productions, and they like our stuff too. So, so I'm guessing you're busy. Yeah, pretty yeah? busy. Busy getting everybody uh, hooked up with your solutions. Yeah, very cool. much so. Um,